All right, let's talk about what is happening in Israel at this hour. Elon Levy is a former Israeli government spokesperson. He's joining us live from Tel Aviv. Mr. Levy, good to see you. And um, thank you very much for making time for us at this critical juncture. We do understand that the IDF is saying that the attacks have stopped and uh, they're telling or urging their citizens to come out of their shelters. Can you confirm this for us? It's been nearly an hour since we had the last rocket sirens here in Tel Aviv. And for now, the army is saying people are allowed to leave their rocket shelters. I don't know whether your viewers are aware of what has been happening here. The entire country was ordered to enter their rocket shelters. Mm -hmm. Everyone, uh, not everyone has a rocket shelter. Some people have them in their apartments. Other people have them in their buildings. Sometimes you just have to stand in the stairwell. But we are talking about what appears to be the biggest ballistic missile attack in history launched directly from the soil of Iran at Israel. Do you know the number of missiles or rockets that were being fired from Iran? Uh, do you have the number with you? Uh, what's going there have to been next? reports in the Israeli media of over 400, but no confirmed number at the moment. Mm -hmm. What is the likely response that uh, the Israeli government is going to take right now? Because we do understand from the Israeli Defense Forces, which says that it will retaliate. There will be consequences, and the United States has warned Iran directly. If it attacks Israel, there will be severe consequences. I don't think that Israel's leaders are going to be able to restrict themselves this time to a symbolic response. That's what's happened back in April. Iran fired over 300 missiles at Israel. Israel responded in a symbolic way, and that sent a message to the Iranian regime that it can, tack, it can attack Israelis without consequences. Mm -hmm. And I think now Israel's leaders are going to be looking to a bigger retaliation against Iran, because otherwise it will simply be inviting more Iranian aggression. Let's remember the basic strategic situation. Israel has been fighting for its life for a year now against the Iranian regime and its proxy armies on seven fronts. This war started with Hamas, Iran's proxy army in Gaza, with the October 7th massacre. The following day, Hezbollah, Iran's proxy army in Lebanon, joined the war, over 9,000 rockets. Then Iran's proxy army in Yemen, the Houthi pirates, started shooting rockets at Israel. Terrorists in the West Bank, drone attacks from Iran, miss drone attacks from Syria, drone attacks from Iraq, now from Iran itself, the Iranian regime which wants to destroy Israel, has been attacking us through its proxy armies for a year now, on seven fronts. And tonight it escalated even further. Levy, I just want to know, what are some of these consequences that Israel and the United States is talking about? Because we did hear also from the US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin that if Iran did go ahead with the threat of attacking Israel, there will be consequences, but we don't know what these consequences are or how they look like. There are many forms that that can take as Israel acts in self-defense. One can imagine there may be a cyber incident. Alternatively, it's not out of the question to imagine direct retaliation against Iranian soil, against military facilities. Israel needs to establish deterrence. It needs to send a clear message to the Iranian regime that they cannot force an entire country, 9 million people, to run into rocket shelters and <laughs> simply get away with it. And that's why it's so important that so many in the international community, Western countries in particular, have stood up for Israel's right to defend itself against Iranian aggression. And being clear, that's the root of everything we have seen in the last year since Iran's proxy army in Gaza, Hamas, attacked on October 7th. This is an Iranian campaign of aggression against the only democracy in the Middle East, and it must end. I want to your views on this statement by the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres was condemned the broadening of the Middle East conflict with escalation after escalation. He tweeted moments ago, he says that this must stop. We absolutely need a ceasefire. And this call has been made also by world leaders at the United Nations. What's your view on this? Is a ceasefire possible? Look, it's not possible to demand a ceasefire after Israel comes under massive attack and to tell it, don't respond. Don't, your, don't defend yourselves. Let the aggressors not pay a price. 
That's not a ceasefire. That's an invitation for further aggression. Now, of course, we don't want this war. We didn't start this war. We didn't expect this war. This war began when Hamas attacked us on October 7th, and it has escalated every day since by the Iranian regime and its proxy armies. We want this to end. We want this to stop. How do you but want we need it to, it to end? How do in a way you... that makes sure that our enemies cannot simply start firing yeah. again at a time of their choosing? Mm -hmm. How do you want it to end? How do you want it to stop? Because there are so many voices who say that um, even if the world calls for a ceasefire, calls for peace. Israel is not willing to listen. Well, let's look at what's happening in Lebanon, for example. Israel is at war with Hezbollah because Hezbollah declared war on October 8th last year. It's fired over 9,000 rockets at Israel. It's displaced 60,000 Israelis, tens of thousands of people who can't go home. Their homes are being bombed. They've been homeless for a year. And all Israel wants is to get them safely back to their homes. We need Hezbollah to stop shooting rockets, and we need it to back away from the northern border. For a year now, Israel has been warning Hezbollah that it has to back off from the northern border. We cannot tolerate the risk mm -hmm. of another October 7th massacre on the Lebanese border, and we cannot allow Iran's illegal proxy army in Lebanon to keep shooting rockets at Israel. So we need this to stop, but we need it to stop in a way that makes sure that the threat is eliminated and not that Iran's proxy armies can resume their campaign of aggression whenever they think the time is right. Mm -hmm. Elon Levy, stay with me because this is a, a continuous update. This is a continuous breaking news. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.